From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides in the path of development. Hello, I am your host Pratiksha Mishra and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity, culture and the developments happening in and around the world. Let's begin the show. India's growth story is an outcome of its innovation, ambition and its hardcore resilience. The country has consistently strived to enhance the standard of living of her people. India's massive transportation system is being meticulously shaped to transcend a multi-frontal challenge of hassle, pollution and delays. Green transition remains the foremost priority of the government in not just dealing with everyday transportation challenges but also to gradually eradicate the overwhelming carbon emissions. Let's take a look at India's green wheel journey. India's transportation sector is a dynamic and vibrant ecosystem that connects people, places and possibilities. From the bustling streets of Mumbai to the scenic highways of Ladakh, India's transportation network is a testament to its diversity, ingenuity, and resilience. India's railways are a marvel of engineering and human ingenuity, with over 115,000 kilometers of track, more than 7,000 stations, and a vast array of trains that cater to every budget and taste. From the iconic Rajdhani Express to the quaint toy trains of Darjeeling, India's railways are a microcosm of its diversity and complexity. देशअप क्लीन कंजेशन फ्री और कन्वीनियंट मोबिलिटी की तरफ बढ़ रहा है The Indian metro system is one of the most efficient and environmentally friendly modes of transportation in the country. With millions of passengers using the metro system every day, it is essential that the system is designed to reduce carbon emissions and promote sustainability. One of the most significant ways that the Indian Metro is reducing its carbon footprint is through the use of renewable energy sources. Many metro stations in India are equipped with solar panels to generate electricity and power the stations. Solar power is a clean and renewable source of energy that is free from carbon emissions, making it an ideal solution for reducing the carbon footprint of the metro system. India's first underwater metro, which spans over 3,300 kilometers and will run from the east-west corridor of Kolkata, is a testament to the country's engineering prowess. With such cutting-edge technologies and state-of-art facilities, India has become an icon for development for the world. Hydrogen as a fuel has entered the Indian market as well. Hydrogen cars are ready to take over Indian roads and India's first hydrogen train will be hitting tracks by the end of this year and will surely change the face of travel. Atmanirbhar Bharat ki ek aur misal hai hydrogen train. December 2023 tak hydrogen train banke niklegi jo ki puri tarah se Bharat mein design Bharat mein manufacture. Electric vehicles are sweeping across India. With zero tailpipe emission, lower operating cost, comfortable and a smoother ride, electric vehicles are redefining transportation and challenging conventional fuel strengths. The research and academic institution in India are working hard for the development of indigenous and low cost battery technology for electric vehicles. We are aggressively pursuing research on green hydrogen as a transport fuel. So I am very much confident that on that line we are working because that is the need of the country. The Indian government is pushing electric vehicles and equipping them to dominate the industry. From tax incentives to subsidies, building charging infrastructure to battery swapping policies, India is making way to accelerate her green transition. The electrification of Indian railways is an evolutionary brighter, more sustainable future. By reducing the reliance on fossil fuels, electrification helps to reduce the carbon footprint and improve the air quality in the surrounding areas. 
The transition to electric trains is making India's goal of achieving a net zero carbon emission target by 2070 clear and visible. With every new route kilometer electrified and every new electric locomotive produced, the railways are moving closer to a greener nation. The electrification of over 1,900 route kilometers during the 2022 to 2023 fiscal year is an incredible accomplishment, representing a 41% increase from the previous year. Additionally, the production of 785 electric locomotives in the first few months of the fiscal year is a remarkable feat. From buses to trains to personal vehicles, India has made remarkable progress in switching to green energy. This is even more significant as India, despite being an emerging economy, has maintained an approach that has been responsible and focused on the goal of eliminating her carbon footprint. For centuries, India has remained a cauldron of intercultural mingling and an abode of communal harmony between diverse religions and faiths. This brotherhood and camaraderie often highlights more when people celebrate their festivals. The ongoing Amarnath Yatra is one such occasion when people from different religious communities come together in service of devotees who embark on an arduous journey towards the holy Amarnath cave in Kashmir. This year, a Langar Seva or Community Kitchen was organized in Udhampur with the support of locals belonging to different religious communities. Take a look. Amarnath Yatra, the most revered pilgrimage among the devotees of Lord Shiva has commenced. People from across India are heading to Jammu and Kashmir to seek blessings from Barfani Baba or Lord Shiva. A large number of locals from different religious communities have come forward to make arrangements for food and shelter for the pilgrims. Battal Balia village of Udhampur district of Jammu and Kashmir, a langar seva or community kitchen service has been organized in coordination with Human Rights Commission and the Social Justice Council of India. The initiative is a clear demonstration of cultural and religious integrity between different religious communities as the locals, whether they are Hindu, Muslim or Sikh, came forward to contribute to the community kitchen and other services for the pilgrims. We have put this langar on the National Human Rights Board. This is our Director General M.I. Zargar. We have put it on the direction. And the National Human Rights Board is our work. We work for people and people's welfare. We work for all the people who are Hindu, Muslim, Sikh. We work for all the people. 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 जो और और किसी का कोई मतलब गलत फहमी है वो दूर हो जाएगी लोगों को पता चलेगा कि वहाँ पर हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख और सारे मिलकर हमारा वेलकम कर रहे हैं To give the pilgrims a smooth experience during the yatra the langar organized with the support of locals would run throughout the 62 days yatra season ये खुशी की बात है जो अमरनाथ यात्रा जो यहां पे लंगर हमने लगाया हुआ है और सबको मुबारकबाद हम देते हैं कि आप यहाँ पे आए हैं जो आपके लिए इंतजाम किया गया है और बगैर टेंशन के हर चीज आपके साथ अवेलेबल है और बाकी यही है कि ये लंगर इसलिए लगाया जाता है कि जो भी दूर से आते हैं और उनको उनके लिए आराम के लिए और जहाँ जब भी कोई सुलियत हो यहाँ पे और दूसरा ये है कि बगैर टेंशन जैसे कि बहुत सारे डरते हैं कि हम जाएं यात्रा लेकिन यहाँ पे मतलब पता नहीं क्या होगा ये हो वो यहाँ पे कोई डरने की बात नहीं है ये तो अफवाहें जो होती हैं वो तो ऐसे चलती रहती हैं हर जगह पे लेकिन जो हमारा यहाँ पे सबसे बड़ी बात है कि ये अमरनाथ यात्रा जो हमारी जे के में है ये तो सबसे बड़ी खुशकिस्मती की बात है और यहाँ हर किस्म के लोग आते हैं ये नहीं है कि बस अगर अमरनाथ यात्रा है तो यहाँ पर हिंदू भाई आएंगे या कोई यहाँ पे मुसलमान भी आ सकते हैं कोई हर किसी के लिए ये यात्रा अवेलेबल है Many events like these are being organized for the comfort and ease of the Amarnath Yatris through mutual support. It is not just a significant effort for the success of the pilgrimage, but also foster the bond among all the communities residing in India.
And now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Godrej Aerospace is in talks to build aircraft parts for suppliers to Airbus and Boeing as airlines place record jet orders, a top executive at the Indian company said. The company will also pitch to manufacture modules of GE 414 engines and become part of the supply chain for the workhorses that will power the next generation of Indian fighter jets. India has been pushing for indigenous manufacturing as well as local sourcing of components for aerospace and defense and companies like Airbus and Boeing have recently committed to more local manufacturing and investment. Hindu devotees across India flock to temples of Lord Shiva, the Lord of Destruction, as they offered prayers along with milk and flowers to the Shivlingam, which is a phallic representation of the deity marking the first Monday of the holy month of Shravan. The Hindu religion considers the first Monday of the month-long Shravan or monsoon extremely auspicious. Devotees in eastern Bhuvaneswar and western Gwalior cities were seen walking long stretches overnight carrying offerings as a way to showcase their faith and devotion. Monsoon season in India is associated with Lord Shiva and it is believed that praying to him during the period would help bring good luck and prosperity to the devotees. The month of Shravan will stretch over a span of two months this year as compared to the usual month-long festivities. India has always been the center of religious integrity, which has promoted love and harmony among various communities. The Burara Sharif Darga of Baba Hazrat Data Amir Ali on the borderline of the districts of Bihar and Jharkhand is one such example of the beautiful Ganga Jamni Tehzeeb, the distinct and syncretic fusion of Hindu-Muslim culture. Let's have a look. Nestled in the lap of nature, Located in the Kunda village of Chatra district of Jharkhand is the Darga of Baba Hazrat Data Amir Ali. People from both communities, Hindus and Muslims, regardless of their religious dissimilarities, come to the holy place to offer prayers in complete brotherhood and harmony. Despite being surrounded by forest and mountains, the shrine of Baba Amir Ali is often thronged with devotees. It is believed that the prayers offered with a sincere heart never go in vain and that nobody returns empty-handed from here. Many people suffering from mental illness also visit the shrine and it is believed that they get cured automatically after staying and praying here for 40 days. My daughter was very Dr. Factor. कहीं नहीं ठीक हुआ तो यहाँ लाया तो अच्छा है बारान चार ना बचल है यहाँ तो अच्छा जगह है कहीं से मारल फिरल आदमी आता है अगला पगला ठीक हो जाता है यहाँ ये तो हम लोग देख रहे हैं नजर के सामने देख रहे हैं कि अगल पगल मैंने दो महीना में तीन महीना में ठीक हो के जाता है ना अच्छा है the devotion towards the saint pulls pilgrims from different corners of the country to the holy shrine Though the footfall of Hindu devout people is often regarded bigger than the rest. As part of their pilgrimage, irrespective of their religions, devotees stay at the houses of Hindu and Muslim brothers without any discrimination, while they in turn show generosity and make them experience great hospitality. It is said that Saint Baba Amir Ali had served humanity with his spiritual powers for around 15 years after coming here from Kabul in 1841, and that the kings of Manatu and Kunda states had attended and appreciated his divine and spiritual sustenance. This is Barura Sarif. Here, Hazrat Data Amir Ali Salah Sahib ki majar hai yahan pe. यहाँ पे लगभग हजार के तादाद में लोग डेली आते जाते हैं यहाँ पे जो भी इनकी 
इंटरनल प्रॉब्लम है उनके सोल्यूशन मिलते हैं यहाँ पे बाकी बहुत सारे आते हैं यहाँ पे उनका सोल्यूशन होते हैं जी सामान आप बेचते हैं यहाँ पे जो भी बाजार के सामान है जैसे चादर वगैरह होते हैं अगरबत्ती धूप वगैरह जो भी होते हैं जो कि यहाँ पे ज़रूरत है ले जाने के लिए जो बेसिक ज़रूरी की चीज़ें हैं वो वो चीज़ बेचते हैं यहाँ पे यहाँ कौन कौन समुदाय के लोग आते हैं यहाँ पे सब समुदाय के लोग आते हैं क्योंकि ये सिर्फ मेरा मुस्लिम समुदाय के के लिए नहीं है यहाँ पे यहाँ पे जिनको जो प्रॉब्लम है वो अपने अपने प्रॉब्लम लेके आते हैं सब आते हैं यहाँ पे मुस्लिम हिंदू ईसाई सब आते हैं यहाँ पे अच्छा ये कब से आप ये काम कर रहे हैं मेरा हो यहाँ पे हम लोग बीस साल से हो गए ये दुकान तीस साल से घर भी है जी हमारा घर भी है यहीं पर The Darga is located at the border line between Chhatra and Gaya district of Jharkhand and Bihar. For decades, the festival of Ram Navmi and Durga Puja is celebrated every year with great devotion. हमारे बाबा टकारी के रहने वाले थे गया जिला टकारी के और अंग्रेज के जमाने में वो दरोगा थे रिटायर करके गया में मुंशी का काम करते थे वो कोर्ट का चाहिए मैं कार्तिक का वहीं बाबा से मुलाकात हुआ. और मुलाकात होने के बाद में हमारे बाबा के साथ इन्होंने यहाँ आए और यहाँ जब आए तो यहाँ घूमे टहले इनको अच्छा लगा और जब अच्छा लगा ये अठारह की बात है अठारह में यहाँ बाबा आए और आए तो यहाँ अच्छा रह गया यहाँ रहना शुरू कर दिया अठारह तक 15 साल वो जीवित रहे हैं इलाके में घूमे टहले ये जो बना वो मकान देख रहे हैं ये अपने से बनाए उन्होंने और अपने से बना कर इसमें हयात रहे वो पंद्रह साल जीवित अपने उसके बाद यहाँ जब उनका इंतकाल हुआ उसके बाद यहीं उनको दफन कफन किया गया वो बोले कि हमको यहीं दफन कफन कर दोगे और कहीं ले जाना नहीं है यहीं रहें और उसके बाद वो अपने जीवित में भी एक से एक करिश्मा दिखलाए यहाँ यहाँ 70 परसेंट हिंदू समाज के लोग आते हैं इसलिए कि यहाँ कुंदा बगल में कुंदा स्टेट था दुर्गा पूजा में और रामनवमी में कुंदा स्टेट और मनातू स्टेट दो स्टेट बगल में है कुंदा और मनातू दोनों के राजा यहाँ दुर्गा पूजा के पहले या हर पर्व के पहले आके अपना चादर चढ़ाते थे बाबा के यहाँ और तब यहाँ जनता की चादर चढ़ती थी आज भी सरकारी चादर पहले चढ़ती है तब लोगों की चढ़ती है तो दोनों स्टेट के राजा यहाँ आते थे तो जनता भी आती थी इसीलिए यहाँ रामनवमी में भी यहाँ बहुत बड़ा मेला लगता है इसीलिए क्योंकि रामनवमी में पहले वो लोग आके यहाँ पूजा कर लेता था तब अपने घर पर पूजा करते थे लोग For centuries, it has been because of saints like Baba Hazrat Data Amir Ali, who flourished and cultivated an unbreakable bond in India, that the peace and brotherhood among communities with distinct faiths have been preserved. The legacy is getting passed on from generation to generation. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happening from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Archaeologists in Peru discovered an entrance frozen in time to an ancient temple belonging to the pre-Incan Chavin culture. The southern corridors which were left untouched by its last occupants leading to the central chambers of the temple's gallery said Stanford University archaeologist and the director of Chavin Culture Research Project John Rick Experts dated the galleries in Chavin de Huntar to the years between 1300 and 550 BC According to archaeologists Chavin was home to different cultures through the ages and held a high cultural and religious importance A house stone library in the village of Bistaid Amir in Egypt's delta city of Sagazik is bursting at the seams with young bookworms who fill every empty corner of it with an open book in their hands. Village resident Muhammad Abdel Aziz Fati began this initiative in the hopes of providing access to much needed cultural services to children in the area. The 34-year-old who works in a public library in the city turned part of his house town into a library where children can come to read or borrow up to 5 books a week. His small library is frequented by 500 children aged between 3 years old up to 20 year olds. Younger children read, write, paint, play chess while older visitors receive training in marketing, computer science and programming. Literacy programs are also offered to the elderly who cannot read or write. India 
often hailed as a land of diversity, is a dynamic kaleidoscope of various cultures and traditions. But Indian culture is not just about monuments and art. It thrives in the hearts and minds of its people through its captivating art pieces and crafts as well. The vibrant exotic pieces of Lambani embroidery made out of discarded clothes and colourful threads with many small ornamental accessories are a glowing example of many such handicrafts that could leave the viewer enchanted. Today in our episode, we'll walk you through this intriguing form of handicraft which recently made the Guinness World Record for its patchwork in Humpy as part of the third culture working group meeting of the G20 as India holds its maiden presidency this year. Take a look. An intricate embellishment of multicolored threadworks characterized by small ornamental mirrors along with patchwork is quintessential to Lambani women's attire. Lambada embroidery also known as Lambani or Sandul Lambani embroidery is often practiced by the Banjara tribes of Bellari and Bijapur in Karnataka and Hyderabad in Andhra Pradesh. It is also believed that the Lambani tribe, which has spread itself across Karnataka and other states, were once nomadic tribes that all the way came from Afghanistan to Rajasthan and then to other parts of the country ages ago. The community has garnered much appreciation due to its exotic piece of embroidery work in India and now the Lambani embroidered textiles are leaving an impression at the global level also. The recent Guinness World Record for the largest display of Lambani items during the third culture working group meeting of the G20 in Hampi mesmerized the guests. हमारे काम वो बहुत काम रहते महीने रहते पंद्रह दिन होते आठ दिन में उस छोटा काम रिया तो आठ दिन में करते ये करिया तो एक वर्ष जाना हमारे को ये होता वो एक वर्ष हाँ बार महीना होता हाँ ड्रेस बनाना का तो ये बनाया तो ये का पंद्रह दिन में वे बनाते हैं the handicraft is not just a source of income for the Lambani tribes, but a reflection of their emotional associations and the passion for vibrant colors. Apart from adding details like colorful thread patterns, mirror works, metal beads, coins or gauri to embroider the pieces of fabrics, the community also invests in creating other wonderful items such as bed sheets, cushion covers, bags, wall hangings, mobile phone covers and even styled ready-to-wear garments. The visitors were hooked to these exotic and vivid handmade designs during the program. To enhance their skills and revive the traditional craftsmanship of the community and ensure a steady income for them, Kushalkala Kendra is constantly working and promoting their aesthetics. Around 600 artisans are skillfully stitching together small pieces of discarded fabric to create a beautiful Lambani craft daily. <laughs> बीस लोगों के बीच में एक सुपरजर रहती है यहाँ पे और उनको पूरा मैं समझा के फिर गांव में आके उन लोग आर्टिजन को समझाते हैं कि ऐसा करना है ये इतना दिन में करना है ये आर्डर का है या हम अपना मार्केट का है सब समझा के उसके बाद यहाँ लाते हैं बंडल धागा मिरर मार्किंग के साथ बंडल भांके इन लोगों को हम देते 
encapsulating the essence of Vasudev Kutumbakam, demonstrating a testament to the power of unity in diversity and harmonious coexistence among different cultures, the display program was led under its Culture Unites All campaign. As a part of syndicated effort, 450 Lambani artisans and other cultural practitioners came together to create 1755 unique embroidery patches, marking their highest ever while making a Guinness world record. The rich embroidery tradition of the Lambani community is anticipated to bring numerous business opportunities from across the world. हमारे लिए एक बहुत बड़ा आ, आ, मौका था और हमारे जो कम्युनिटी है लम्बानी जो बहन लोग जो काम करते हैं जो लेडीज़ काम करते हैं उनके लिए एक नया अवसर मिला तो हमको बहुत खुशी हो रही है कि हम लोगों ने कल जी ट्वेंटी के जो सी डब्ल्यू जी हम्पी में जो हुआ उसमें हम लोगों ने वो वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड को अकम्पलिश किया और होपफुली इससे ग्लोबल में हमारा नाम बढ़ेगा भारत का नाम बढ़ेगा हमारा संडूर कला केंद्र का नाम बढ़ेगा तो हमको अच्छा मौका मिलेगा the craftsmanship of the colorful Lambani community is mere glimpse of India's rich tradition and cultural creativity. However, there are multiple examples of such art pieces that would leave you awestruck at first glance. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback on myindia at the rate anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.